We have a coronal hole that's taking center stage while we wait for new regions to rotate into Earth view. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Although space weather this past week has been a bit of a fizzle, it does look like activity is beginning to pick up. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, you can see the cluster of regions in the north. These were the big flare players that were firing off some decent-sized solar flares and some mini solar storms. Sadly, the solar storms really never manifested much activity at Earth. They all kind of went south of Earth. Wasn't it just our luck? But these regions are now rotating to the sun's far side. Then on the 13th, we actually had a fill eruption that launched a solar storm. This is partly Earth-directed, but once again, it looks like it's going to go south of Earth, and we may not get much of it either. If we get any impact, it'll be sometime about midday on the 17th. But the big story is a look past that in the south, and you can see this massive coronal hole. This coronal hole is going to be giving us some fast solar wind in about a week's time, and that could bring us some decent aurora. Now, granted, this hole has not got the right magnetic polarity to give us sustained aurora, but it could give us a decent burst of it for a short period down to mid-latitudes and definitely up in the high-latitude regions for a couple days. So that's what's the big story when it comes to aurora players, and hopefully Aurora photographers will be able to get a decent show after a week of fizzles. Now, as we take a look at our far side, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see those regions in the north rotating off of the west limb in Stereo's view, and then you can also see that massive coronal hole in the south. Yet, look just past that to the east limb. You can see lots of bright regions gurgling and flickering like that. Well, this these set of regions, it means that they're growing when they flicker like that, which means they could be big flare players. If nothing else, they will definitely keep that solar flux uh, boosted into the, the triple digits uh, and also keep that radio noise a bit alive on Earth's day side. So at least amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect to have a continued uh, noise on the bands. And for space traffic, well, we'll just have to wait for these regions to rotate more into Earth view to see whether or not we have a risk for big flares once again. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, and by the 19th, the moon will still be about 23% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the fast solar wind from that massive coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next few days. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active to possibly even minor storm conditions with up to about a 50% chance of a major storm. Now, this is going to be right around the 18th or 19th, but remember, we do have that grazing passage from that solar storm that could hit as early as like midday on the 17th. So at high latitudes, we do have a bit of chance for some extended aurora possibilities. But remember, once that coronal hole and the fast solar wind from that coronal hole hits, it's not the right magnetic configuration. So storming may not last in through, you know, the latter part of, of November. So don't get super excited. It's not expected to be really strong, but it could give us some chances. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions, but we do have up to about a 25% chance of minor storm conditions. So again, it could give us a chance for some aurora at mid-latitudes, but that would be likely early on on when that fast solar wind first hits Earth. So expect it to kind of come on fast and then die down a bit, especially if you're at mid-latitudes. So aurora photographers, this is a chance to see aurora, but it's not going to be the strongest storm you've ever seen. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have that cluster of active regions that's still moving off of the sun's west limb. This is regions 31, 40, 41, and 45. And as long as those regions are still at least in partial Earth view, we're going to continue to have a risk for big flares. So over the 17th, 18th, and 19th, we do still have an elevated risk for M-class flares, including about a 10% chance of X-class flares over the next 24 hours 
hours. Then things will settle down as those regions rotate to the sun's far side and everything will go into the green. Luckily, we do still have solar flux staying up in the triple digits. Don't worry, amateur radio operators, you're still going to get good propagation on Earth's day side. You're just going to notice the noise on the bands begin to quiet down around the 19th and the 20th. Perfect timing for that fast solar wind, right? So you're going to get a disturbance of a different kind at that point. But meanwhile, we do have a small uh, radiation storm risk, about a 10% chance of an S1 risk. And this is due to the fact that those cluster of regions are rotating to the west limb of the sun. But once they rotate behind the sun's limb, we will see that risk go down. So frequent flyers, just kind of pay attention. I doubt we're going to get anything, but just pay attention because we could get radiation storms in and around the next couple days. So the space weather this week is picking up a little bit. The main attraction is that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. So aurora photographers, especially if you're at high latitudes, we could get some decent show. Remember, we do have that kind of glancing blow from that solar storm that's going west of Earth, but that could give us enough to kind of begin the aurora festivities, and then we get that fast solar wind in through the 19th and 20th, and it could give you a bit of an extended show. Now, aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, it's not going to be quite so great for you. At about the 19th and 20th is when you could get a little bit of a show, but things may die down quickly after that, so make sure you chase early if you chase at all. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency response well, good news for you in the sense that we have those uh, big flare players rotating to the sun's far side here over the next couple days. You're going to notice the noise on the bands is going to get a bit quieter, and that's going to be uh, a wonderful reprieve for you just in time for the solar storm to hit. So, you know, you're going to trade one disturbance for another, but oh well, you'll make it through, I promise. This time it's going to be the solar storm hitting on the Earth's night side, so at least day side propagation should stay in the good range for you. And now you GPS users, well, you know, things aren't too bad that we got the radio blackouts dying out, so we don't have to worry so much about that. And then this solar storm that's going to hit the Earth's night side, well, that's not such a strong storm after all. So as long as you stay away from Aurora and away from those Dawn Dust Terminators, your GPS reception should be pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.